Hi, everyone out there in DNN Derbylandia. It's me, Miss Moxie. And it's Jeffrey Calmer. And we are going to be bringing you Bellingham Roller Betty's Blunt Force Trauma versus the Tucson Roller Derby Saddle Tramps. This game brought to you by Adam Wheels. A lot of girls out here skating on the Juke wheels. They're perfect for flat track derby. The Juke 2.0 allows a skater to maneuver, speed up, and slow down much easier. They also allow for quicker hockey stops and faster recovery. Try some Jukes today from Adam Wheels. I personally have Adams on my skates. I don't skate, but if I did, I would have Adams on them. Yeah, that Adamatrix man, she knows a thing or two about roller derby wheels. What is happening over here in the fan area? There's some men with their shirts off. Which is never a good thing. No. Um, <laughs> but, you know, sporting events, it does tend to happen. And it says, I Utah or something. I can't uh, read it. <laughs> that one guy's got to do some push-ups because I cannot read what his chest well, says. Well, that's a U. And U-T-T. I. I butta. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to spend the next 20 minutes trying to figure out what these gentlemen's chests say. Yeah, if you thought you were going to hear about Derby, you're mistaken. We're going to be reading the <laughs> drunken dudes at Trackside's <laughs> pectoral muscles. Stand good, by. Good luck, suckers. Uh, we we are going to be getting underway here in just a moment. I think the girls are all getting their equipment checked, making sure that you know their fishnets are all dolphin safe. My question is, where would they hide anything? That's my question. It's not what they're hiding; it's what they're wearing. They got their mouth guard has to fit, their helmet has to fit. They have to be wearing you know regulation knee pads, wrist guards, elbow pads. All that stuff. I don't think they really believe, the refs really believe that any of these girls is going to be hiding like a shank or a razor blade in <laughs> any of their gear. You're ruining it for me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to burst the bubble. It could happen. You know, I, there was that, there was that, uh, that incident with the girl and the pipe bomb not too long ago in I'll, Alabama I'll, or wherever I'll, it was. I'm going to keep praying. That's all I'm going to say. I'll yeah. keep praying. All right, the referees look like they're about done patting them down. The teams are huddling up. They and look uh, like they're ready for some roller derby action. Now, uh, let's see, Tucson, did they play earlier today? Not I yet. This is the first appearance by the hometown team here All in Tucson, right. Arizona. They are seated number two. Bellingham, of course, seated number seven. So if the seeds play out the way that they, uh, you know, they should, we should see a pretty good win here by Tucson. However... Uh, you know, we know that the seeds don't always mean all that much. Uh, S, uh, sorry, Santa Cruz was seeded 12th coming into this tournament, and the Arizona Roller Derby Tent City Terrors seeded 5th. Uh, Arizona only won that game by three points. So, you know, anything, anything can and will happen. Uh, hold on to your hats and glasses. Keep your hands and arms inside the vehicle because this here is the wildest ride in the Derby wilderness. Yeah, that seating stuff doesn't always mean a whole lot. It's up to the girls on the track. And here we go. Number 11, Bianca Troll jamming for Tucson's own saddle tramps. And for the blunt force trauma of Bellingham, number 45, Walker, Texas Mangler, starting on her knee on the jammer line. They call Bianca Troll the baby-faced assassin. Uh, doesn't look tough, but wait till she starts to skate. I don't get her name. Beyond, beyond control, oh, perhaps. Oh, see, you're so clever. Well, I, I'm, I'm from Tucson. <laughs> <laughs> you Tucsonians are so clever. She used to play for the team that was sort of the Russian team, so Bianca Troll. The Iron Curtain? Correct. My old teammate Mandy Festo skated for the Iron Curtain. Uh, well, judging from her name, I'd say you're right. Uh-huh. <laughs> So Bianca Troll, one of the original Iron Curtain skaters, now here on the Saddle Tramps, both jammers ready to go. But are the refs? That's the real uh, question. That's always a question. You know, it's just... I don't think just, the refs are ever ready to it's go. It's just the refs' world. We're just living in it. You know what? Sadly, I think you're right. <laughs> and I think we need to change that. Nah, these guys and ladies do a good job out here for us. I, I haven't... I haven't heard any complaining about the refing this weekend. Not this yet. This is rare. Not yet. I wonder what the guy in the Fez is doing out there in the middle of the track. His name is Phallic Thimble. I talked to him earlier. I said, what's up with the Fez? And he just said, I just like wearing Fezes. How do you argue with logic like that? No. I mean, this is roller derby. There are some, some, some pretty clever and interesting outfits. And there are some that are not. Yeah. <laughs> 
sometimes there's a fez. <laughs> and you just have to roll you with it. Roll with the fez. Roll with the fez. <laughs> he doesn't have skates on though, so he's walking with the fez. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, with your shirts off. Seriously, stand up so we can see. Because that stuff's all folded up like a pack of hot dogs right now. Yeah, they're and they're they're written. Their letters or numbers or whatever is going on on their chest is written in black and red. So I'm assuming that they're Bellingham fans. So I might have to ask the Bellingham girls at halftime what is going on. Well, it's just like being a roller derby announcer and you can't read the number on the back of the shirt. You know, I can't read the number on your nipples, sir. No. Could you please flex or do something? If I was a ref, those guys would be in the penalty box. All right, the referees seem to be sorting out their dilemma here on the track. We're going to get started with flat track derby action here from the Dust Devil in Tucson, Arizona. The Bellingham Roller Betties and Tucson Roller Derby's own Saddle Tramps, the hometown team, getting ready to take to the track. Jeff, do you know if these teams have ever met before on the track? I can say with some certainty that they have not. That's going to be good then. I'm excited to watch this. I have never seen Bellingham skate. Same here. This Tuc is my first time. Tucson lots of times. Bellingham, not yet. Yeah, me too. I've played against Tucson. I've watched them skate a bunch. Granted, their team has changed quite a bit. Absolutely. Um, I miss Deadlock Doe. Oh, who doesn't? <laughs> who doesn't? She's awesome. Um, but yeah, Bellingham, I don't know. For some reason, I just have never, I've never caught them before, and I have never caught a game with the FOCO Girls Gone Derby. So uh, two teams that I was really excited to finally get a chance to see this weekend. Now, Bellingham got past FOCO earlier today. Is that correct? They got by them in a big way, yeah. Kind of a rout, you might say. All right, so coming in with a big head of steam is Bellingham, Tucson, Woke up in their own beds today. That could be an advantage. We'll see. They are the hometown hosts. They or are. Hostesses. Ho hostesses with the most tesses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they also have the advantage of being used to this dry desert air, whereas Bellingham, I'm sure, is used to a bit more damp climate. Absolutely. Palm trees. I'm sorry. Pine trees. Uh -huh. As opposed to palms. I keep talking about, you know, weather, but you'd be surprised what a big part it plays in your derby game. I know, for example, when I last played Tucson, we went, we were it, we were at Blade World in Tucson, mm -hmm. and you know, they don't have the air conditioning at Blade World, they just have the swamp cooler, and it was the middle of summer, so for us bad girls used to that nice, cool, uh, foggy air of the Bay Area. Not gonna uh, happen. It was a little rough. It was a little rough playing in, you know, 90 degree heat. Our cheeks were very pink and we had to drink a lot of water. <laughs> stay hydrated, my friends. Yes. Good <laughs> advice. <laughs> and I'm sure these girls are doing a really great job of staying hydrated. Um, they come here, you know, a lot of them spend good uh, good money to come out here either on their own funds or, you know, league funds. Uh, it, it's definitely... Nobody's nobody's paying them to be here. No, they are. For sure. and, yeah, and everybody here is taking it very seriously. So yes. I'm sure the girls got here last night, got some rest, got hydrated, and they're Definitely. ready to rock and roll today. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't out partying last night, but I was down in the lobby for a brief period of time, and there were no girls down there at all. There yeah. was nobody in that bar. It was empty. So, you know, it's a lot has changed since five years ago when I started to uh, – coming to tournaments and everybody just partied all the time yeah it didn't matter if you had a game or three the next day <laughs> much more yeah you got much more serious <laughs> athletes participating the days of the bartenders and two, two artists are behind us we've got serious athletes out there on the track we're going to see some right now right now we're finally getting started hooray all right bianca troll jamming for tucson and it looks like walker texas mangler jamming for bellingham and she has been on one knee for probably the past five minutes. Is she proposing to Bianca? Anything can happen <laughs> here in the world of flat track derby. <laughs> Anything can happen. That'd be interesting. I'm an ordained minister and the captain of my own ship. I'll marry him. Wow, that's that sounds that sounds cool. I don't think it's gonna happen though. No. We should have RollerCon on your boat. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> BoaterCon? Boater. Mm, All right. No. 
No, that wasn't that good. Mm. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the teams look ready. I don't know who's not ready. I oh think my gosh, let's go! I think there's an issue with uh, transferring <laughs> over the statistical uh, dry erase board, is what yes. I've been told. Statistical dry erase yeah. board? Well, it's high tech. You it know. is high tech. It it's involves like lots of uh, erasers and mm -hmm. markers. At least they're not keeping track with charcoal on the back of a shovel like Abraham Lincoln. There's streamers being involved now. Well, they've got to get the uh, the jammer refs <laughs> suitably uh, adorned yep, so we know yep. who's who. They've got to make them look festive. I expect one will be red, one will be black. Yeah, yep. I see green, though. Green, huh? Yeah. We'll see. That doesn't seem right. As a roller derby announcer, you've got to be ready to roll with the punches. I try. I do try. You're going to get a chance right here. I like Howie's green bow tie. It's very classy. <laughs> yes. He looks fantastic, uh -huh. as it were. Oh, man. I am kind of sad that I'm missing the, the Angel City uh, versus Tent City Terrors game happening over here on track one. All of you out there in Derbylandia, though, you can watch that if you want. You just switch right over to that other page. Use your mouse. Mouse away, mouse Click away. It. Click it. Yep. Okay, here we go. What? Yes. Okay. The whistle has been blown. No, I'm not ready. We have liftoff. <laughs> Wait. Walker, Texas Bangler is off the floor. And she is moving. Here we go. Bianca and Walker, your jammers. Tucson versus Bellingham. A Tucson wall in the back of that pack. Not going to stop Walker, Texas Mangler. No, she takes the inside track and lead. Jammer. Status. <laughs> right. I'm still getting used to you. That was good. That was good. <laughs> Both jammers free and clear looking to score points. But Walker in front and ready to catch up with that pack. Bianca Troll hot on her heels. And it looks like a wall of red there in the back for Walker Texas Mangler. And she can't score on her own girls. So, you know, I would think that she'd probably want to call it off. And she does 0-0 zero, zero in that first jam. Yeah, Tucson kind of punting on that one. They sped up the pack, mm -hmm. they split it up, and Bellingham calls it off. That was smart. They made her call it. Already kind of a chess match between these two high-powered flat track derby teams here at the Dust Devil. Yep, yep, yep. That is too legit number 2L uh, jamming for Bellingham. Sammy Automatic number 22 jamming for Tucson. A crowd favorite. I do like Sammy Automatic a lot. She used to be the league president. Huh. Now Fun just fact. a humble jammer. <laughs> Oh, man, right up the inside. Too legit. Yeah, Sammy Automatic having a tough time. She's trying to take an inside line, but too legit, free and clear, ready to score points. Let's see if she can get around before Sammy gets out of that pack. Sammy Automatic needs some help from her friends. Tries for the outside line, then moves inside. Sammy Automatic free and clear. Smart move. Duke to the outside, then take the inside. And Bellingham picking up three on that scoring pass. It looked like too legit. Did, wasn't interested in going for that fourth point, even though she had time. Yeah, she came up against Helen Wheels, one of the top blockers for Tucson, and uh, maybe wisely said, eh, I've had enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, you know, sometimes you just have to make that call. <laughs> well, it's early, early in this bout. These teams are still feeling each other out. Number 11, Bianca Troll jamming for Tucson. And unfortunately, I cannot read the red or the black on red of the like Bellingham jammer. 95, yeah, glad I ate her. Okay, I'm learning <laughs> Me so too. many new names. <laughs> Here we go, the jammers are on the loose. Gladi Ader and Bianca Troll. And there's Tucson again with that huge back wall of black. There goes their jammer trying to get through. Pack very spread out. And she will be victorious. There you go. Bianca Troll makes her way through the baby-faced assassin for Tucson, coming down the front stretch, catching up with the pack. Glad I ate her, still stuck in the back of that pack. Bianca Troll taking the outside path. She's still working. Bianca Troll taking the inside, made one pass through. Nice work by Bianca Troll. She gets the high five from her jam ref. Glad I ate her. Cannot seem to make work of that pack. Yeah, Tucson doing a great job of holding back a glad I ate her. And who isn't, really? 
<laughs> I just ate a sandwich. I was glad I ate that. Bianca Troll taking a bit of a hit there and calls off the jam. Nice work by the baby-faced assassin for the Saddle Tramps. Yes, picking up 10 points for her team. So far, it's back and forth. I think it's uh, the teams are feeling each other out. Nobody's going out on a limb and letting it all hang out quite yet. It's true, it's true. It, it looks like, uh, who is that? Dixie. Dixie what? Dixie. Okay, I can't read that. Dixie Death Dealer. Okay. That's Whatever my guess. you say. I'm just going to call her Dixie for the purposes of this bout. Number 81 for Bellingham. And Sammy Automatic jamming for Tucson. There goes the pack, kind of. Another one of those slow takeoffs. I'm sure there's some strategy you'd understand. I just don't get it. You know, uh, a lot of teams really, really like to be the first people that that jammer encounters in the back of the pack. So Tucson, I believe, this is the second time they've been successful with stopping the other, the opposing jammer in the back of that pack. So, uh, yeah, they definitely have a strategy there. They want the back of the pack. They're willing to start slow to get it. All right, Sammy Automatic, the Tucson Jammer is your lead jammer, so the strategy does work as far as that's concerned. And Tucson all the way up front. Sammy Automatic on the outside gets a rough ride in turn number one. She's got a long way to go. She's going to get through this pack, though. Helen Wheels seriously oh. handing it to that Bellingham jammer. <laughs> She's still got it. Yeah, a lot of jammers leave Tucson with the number 67 indelibly imprinted <laughs> on their eyelids. <laughs> <laughs> and Just other parts souvenir. of their body. Just a little souvenir. Sammy. There, there Sammy, goes Sammy. Yeah. Yep, trying to make her way through, and she does. Nice work by the jammer for Tucson. Five points for Sammy Automatic. I got to say, so far, both, neither one of these teams looks like they're really letting it all hang out. They're both, uh, I think there's a lot more to come is what I'm saying. Definitely. And you know, it's not nearly as fast a game as the game I just watched, mm -hmm. uh, Silicon Valley versus uh, Pikes Peak Derby Dames. That game was 90 miles an hour. Yeah. This is much slower, much more controlled, all about who's controlling pack speed. Yeah, I think uh, I think they've got a lot of, of headroom left, like they say. They've got a lot, a lot, lot of room to go here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's early in this bout. It's Again, it's the first bout for Tucson this weekend. Mm -hmm. So Sammy Automatic taking time scoring her grand slams. Oh, no, sorry, that was four. All right, Sammy Automatic calls it off. Number 22 for Tucson. On the scoreboard, boy, I can hardly read it. 15 to, thank you very much. 19 to 3 in favor of Tucson. <laughs> we had problems with that the last one, too. We kept trying to see the big scoreboard. But actually, there's one right next to us I that is highly neck. visible. All right, the teams are back on the track. Looks like Mina in possession, jamming for Tucson. She's number under 18. And number 45, Walker, Texas Mingler once more, starting with a knee for Bellingham. Tucson out in front, still tons of time to go. And like we said, I think both teams have a lot in store for this bout. They do. Here come the jammers. Mina in possession, trying to make way through the middle of the pack. We'll see how that works out for her. She ends up on the floor. Bellingham's jammer is still standing, but with three Tucson blockers to get through, and she has recycled into the back of the pack. Yeah, both jammers getting forced inside, outside. Great blocking by both squads. Yeah, Walker, Texas Bangler hits Ouch. the floor. Neither of them still with one full lap here. Nobody's broken the pack yet. Yeah, great defense by both teams. Like we said, they are just uh, feeling each other out right now. Mina in possession. Got a couple of skaters to get around. It's one on three at the front of the pack as number 18 goes down. Pack very spread out, though, and she does get a free pass. Your lead jammer is Mina in possession for yes. Tucson. Yes, she is. She is in a position to score some pizzoints. <laughs> Both jammers free and clear, ready to score. Oh, I spoke too soon. Bellingham going to the box. Walker, Texas Manger, Mangler. It looked like a major track cut. Great opportunity for Tucson to stretch this lead with Mina in possession on the track. Oh, but she calls it off. Want to reset and get some fresh girls out there. Sounds good. It looks like she got uh, a little too beat up on that last, uh, last pass. It was a tough trip through the pack yep. for both jammers. I definitely, that's weird. <laughs> I'm just going to read this out loud because I just got a text that says, Hey, Miss Moxie, God loves Derby Girls from Twitter. I, I think God does love Derby Girls. Bianca Troll, the jammer for Tucson, number 11. 
on the line, jamming unopposed. Here we go with a power jam for Tucson. And Tucson's three blockers doing a great job of pulling that goat immediately, making it nice and easy for Bianca Troll to get that 20-foot call and, in fact, the lead jammer. And another Bellingham skater gets whistled off the track. Looks like Cat Scrap Fever sent to the mm -hmm. penalty box for Bellingham. Bellingham really, really laying into Bianca Troll. Really, really does not want her to get out of that pack again. They yeah. were mad about it the first time. They're not going to let it happen again. The pack very spread out, though. They may have to let her go, and that is what happens. Bianca Troll free and clear, ready to take another pass at that pack. The only jammer out there on the track. It's true. If they keep uh, keep it up like this, it's gonna going to put a whole lot of points on the board for Tucson. Oh, the pack slows down and comes to a near stop, and there she goes. The baby-faced assassin, Bianca Troll, one more time. Both jammers out on the track now as Walker is freed from her, her crimes, her punishment. She is, and all four of her blockers... Uh, all four blockers are actively engaging Walker, Texas Nangler, who is now out of the pack uh, on her initial pass after coming out of the box, but she is not your lead jammer because Bianca Troll has that, and she's going to call off the jam after another Grand Slam. Big jam for the Tucson Saddle Tramps. Yeah, nice work by Tucson's very own Bianca Troll. 31-3 to on the scoreboard. Tucson jumping out to an early lead. A lot of time to go. Bellingham with plenty of firepower, so don't go anywhere, folks. No, no, no. That would just, that would be silly. silly. It would be dumb. More than silly. Dumb. <laughs> dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Lindsay Lowblow jamming for Tucson. She came up through the ranks as part of Tucson's uh, Derby Brats program. She uh, just turned 18, and she's old enough to skate with the big girls. Awesome. And hey, hey, it's too legit jamming for Bellingham. Lindsay is a physical skater. Don't let her age fool you. Let's see. And there she goes. Takes the outside route. Number five, Lindsay Lowblow, your lead jammer. Hot on her heels is too legit. Yeah, both jammers free and clear looking to score points. The pack moving fast. Let's see what happens. They're going to have to hit that pack at speed. Everybody fighting to get their jammer some points. Really smart, smart blocking. Uh, I couldn't see that blocker's name for Tucson, but one of them just held held that one of the Bellingham girls in the back just long enough so that her block her jammer could score one point and then ran away from the opposing jammer. That's it. They took a little uh, little nibble of points there for Lindsay Loblow. Nice mm -hmm. work by the rookie. Yes, and we have it looks like a timeout for Bellingham. Bellingham. Yes. Bellingham officially has a timeout, which means I get to talk to you about Fast Girl Skates. Um, they are an awesome sponsor of GNN. They are allowing us to be here this weekend, bringing you all of this amazing roller derby action. Um, they also opened the very first brick and mortar roller derby store in Seattle, Washington. Um, they offer the best in clothing, skates, and gear for roller derby. And if you can't get to their really cute little sh shop in Seattle and go say hi to them in person, you can check them out at fastgirlskates.com. I think that says it all. It says some things. I don't know if I'd say all. Tucson back on the track. Bellingham still huddled up. It looks like they're the ones that want to get their strategy together. They are trailing 31-3. to Still tons of time here. 20 minutes to go in the first half. It's true. And it looks like our scoreboard is actually not correct. Is our scoreboard correct? I think our scoreboard says 31 to 3, but that scoreboard says 39 to 3. Curse this internet. Dang you interwebs. Sammy Automatic jamming for Tucson. And that would be Dixie jamming for Bellingham. Bellingham also trying to start in the back of the pack there. Not working out so hot for them. Yeah, Sammy Automatic fights her way through on the inside. Lead jammer goes to Tucson for the Settle Tramps. Sammy Automatic. And having to let that jammer go for fear of blocking outside the engagement zone. Sounds like something from a post-apocalyptic movie. The engagement Whoa. zone. I hear whistles. Does that mean the jam's over? The jam is over, and it looked like the Tucson jammer called it a little too late. Two points picked up for Bellingham, 
and zero for Tucson. You need those chameleon eyes so you can see behind your head. You know, I have a bit of a lazy eye, and so when I skate, I feel like it's to my advantage because you really don't know what I'm looking at. I like it. <laughs> I can't figure out what the hell you're doing. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm an enigma. Mina in possession, jamming for Tucson. Walker, Texas Mangler with the star. Four. And here we go. Whoa. Nice <laughs> they weren't waiting for nothing. No, they were not. Hit the pack at 90 miles an hour and kept on going. Yeah, the, when the pack starts slow, sometimes those jammers just want to go, go, go. Yep. Mine in possession, taking an outside route. Now going to the inside. Walker, Texas Mangler, Mangler looked like she had a clear shot. Ooh. And she, she didn't. Yeah, she got around. Uh, she got around uh, Helen Wheels, but she is not the lead jammer. Nope. So, still hope for Mina in possession, but she is stuck in the back of the bus. Yeah, her girls have got to get her out of that pack. Meanwhile, Walker scoring points as we speak. Tucson really focused on defense right now. They're kind of leaving their jammer alone in the back of that Bellingham pack of four girls. I don't think four on one is a fair fight. No, that's not so good. <laughs> Meanwhile, Helen Wheels. Whistled off the track for Tucson. So Tucson, a skater down at this point. Yeah, they don't need any more skaters in the box. They've only got three blockers on there now, and somebody really needs to be dedicated, there we go, yeah, to helping their jammer through that pack. I don't think our scoreboard is getting updated. You're right. No. We that one has a four on it. I just said, did you know you killed yours? We're going to ask Phil Rudd. Come on down. So we'll get the score updated for you guys there uh, watching at home as oh. soon as we possibly can. Hey, it looks like Walker has been whistled off the track. Bad news for Bellingham. Bad news for Bellingham, but, you know, they did score quite a few points before she was sent to the box. And uh, Time running out. Mina in possession still has not made her initial pass through this pack. Still having a rough time with the Bellingham girls. Yeah, she looks a little forlorn back there. <laughs> Guys, stop leaving me alone with these girls. They're killing me. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> Help me out, please. And there's the end of the jam. Bellingham, happy to hear it. Big time jam for the ladies in red. And I think the score is going to be 42 for Tucson. Hold on. I'm going to look at this. I'm going to I'll wait here. Both teams back on the track as we check on the score. The only jammer on the track is Bianca Troll for Tucson. And there we go. Action on the track. A power jam opportunity for the Tucson Saddle Tramps. And the score is officially 41 Tucson to 10 Bellingham. 41 10 in favor of the hometown Saddle Tramps. And they are successful in picking off a goat there in the back, but not successful in slowing her down enough to get that 20 foot call. Very yeah. physical blocking there on behalf of the Bellingham Roller Bettys. And nice move by Bianca Troll. She makes her move to the inside. Lead jammer goes to Tucson once more. Walker, Texas Mangler, comes out of the box and gets right through the pack. I don't think Tucson was ready for her. No, I don't think so at all. She got a really easy trip through. But right now it's all about that lead jammer, Bianca Troll. And she calls off the jam. Yep. Four points more for Tucson. Making it 44. 45 to 10. All right, the team's back on the track. Look like Mina in possession, jamming for the saddle tramps. And 95, Glad I ate her, jamming for Bellingham. Big lead for Tucson, still tons of time to go. Bellingham already with a victory under their belts today. Let's see if they can pick up another one against the hometown hostesses, saddle tramps. Ouch, it is getting bumpy out there in the backstretch. It is getting bumpy. Nobody yet out of the pack. Mine in possession. Trying for the outside, but she gets a rough ride out to referee land. 
And unfortunately, before she can realize that the other blocker went out, she is recycled back into that pack. And I hear the whistle. Maybe it's the wrong bout. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard in these two <laughs> there's bouts. There's so many referees. Yeah, there's so many whistles. It's kind of a nightmare. And we have a jammer out. It looks like Glad I Ate her is not your lead jammer. However, she is in a position to score some points. Mina in possession again, looking forlorn at the back of the pack. Her friends have forgotten her. They've forgotten all about her. If I were Tucson, I would send one of my girls back to play some offense. They've got three strong blockers in the front. They need somebody back there yeah. helping out their jammer. Yeah, it's a little weird. You can't win the game without scoring any points. Defense is, their defense looks incredible, but they're really leaving their jammers all by themselves back there. Mina in position gets lead. Jammer status calls it off right away and heads forlornly to the bench. <laughs> Sammy Automatic taking the line for Tucson. And that is Dixie Death Dealer, I think. That death, is. death Dealer. Death Dealer. I think it's like a, okay. it's like a hip abbreviation. I'm not hip. I know. Do you, do you send text messages? <laughs> I do, but I don't abbreviate. <laughs> I don't use lol speak. <laughs> lol. That's a lol. Her name is lol. Oh, okay. Dixie lol. All right, here come the jammers. Dixie lol and Sammy Automatic. Big lead for Tucson. Tons of time to go, though. Tons of time to go. Tucson with the back in black wall. Again, nobody helping out <laughs> the Tucson jammer. <laughs> I think I see a chink in the armor here. Yes. There we go. And that being said, she is able to get through. She is getting the lead jammer nod. Sammy automatic. If you're going to be a jammer for Tucson, you got to be a, a self-starter. Yes. Sammy Automatic free and clear looking to catch up with the pack. She is taking the, looks like an inside line. Yeah, that's She's right. taking some kind of line. She's taking the line of, hey, guys, help me out now. The yeah. Other, the other jammer's not even on the, on the tr in the pack. Ouch. Got tangled up in turn number one. Did Sammy Automatic. Great <laughs> blocking out there by the Bellingham Roller Betties. And a late jam call by whatever jammer ref that was. Sammy doing a little dance. Hey, I'm calling it off. Look at me. Look at me. This is the I'm calling off the jam dance. Yeah. <laughs> I'm calling it off. I'm calling it off. Walker, Texas Mangler lined up to jam for Bellingham. Against the rookie Lindsay Loblo for Tucson. And it looks like Bellingham's going to try and start on a knee here, maybe to get their fourth Blocker out of the pack. Ouch. Yep, a little bit of a little bit of a tumble there in uh, turn two. Yeah, big time impact here. Let's see. No lead jammer has emerged yet. Great blocking happening out there as we come down the front stretch. Walker trying to make her way around. None other than Helen Wheels. Go figure. She is trying super hard too. Like she really, you can tell she's giving 100% out there. She is not a lazy jammer, and she earned that lead jammer call. <laughs> she earned it. Walker, Texas, Mangler, your lead Ooh. jammer. Lindsay Loblow still in trouble, took a big hit, fell down. She seems all right. She does seem all right, yeah. But she also does seem to be going to the box. So making this a power jam for Walker, Texas, Mangler, and her Bellingham girls. She doesn't seem to be. She is. Yeah, you're right. She is. I did see it with my own eyes. I'm not sure what Walker's doing. She's holding her hands up. Having a conversation with the Tucson girls. I don't think they want to talk. I think they want to hit her. Yeah, my advice is skate around them. <laughs> Score some points. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to have a conversation with Helen Wheels while you're in the pack with her. Promise. Well, all she says is, I'm going to hit you. Yep. And we have a grand slam for Bellingham. Yeah, Walker got a nice pass there. The pack a bit spread out. Plenty of room for number 45 from Bellingham. Great opportunity now for Bellingham to get back into this thing. Tucson with a big lead, but all the cards on the side of Bellingham right now. Oh, I 
Things a bit congested out there on the track as Walker trying to take an outside line. Nice block there. Her and Helen Wheels meet once again at the front of the pack. Helen Wheels has got to let her go by. And again, Walker makes her way through for Bellingham. A nice 10 point jam there for Walker, Texas Mangler, and the Bellingham Roller Betties. Yeah, a couple of those, and we'll have a whole new ball game. And uh, again, if you're at home, our score here looks like 48 to. We got a timeout, Sal Rams. 48 to, to something. Sorry, we can't see a scoreboard here, guys. You what's, can probably see it. At what's home. wrong with my monitor? <laughs> All right, looks like we got a timeout on the track. Tucson looking to uh, regroup and get their battle plan together to huddle up with their coach there. Bellingham meeting out on the track themselves. Both teams looking to get their strategy together as a big, big rally by the ladies in red. 48 to 22 on the scoreboard. Bellingham closing the gap here. Eh, seven minutes to go in the first period. Yeah, yeah. I think they can do it. They had a, they had a nice little jam there. Uh, they're getting their sea legs, maybe. You can't beat a ten point jam, my friend. No, well, no, you no. Can, but yeah, I, well, yeah, I've seen often. it. I've <laughs> seen it happen. But yeah, in this game, you know, there haven't been a whole lot of big, like multiple multiple passes. There's been some tens, and I think was there a fourteen. That's Maybe I'm getting it. my games mix, mixed up. There's so much derby happening. Well, Tucson calling that timeout, trying to get their battle plan together. They've got a big lead. They'd like to keep it. I and here we would. go. Bianca Troll taking the line for Tucson, number 11. And too legit for Bellingham. The teams are lined up. Wait. Get off the track, you. <laughs> we Cosmo have a pivot in the box. Cosmonauti not supposed to be out there. All right, the Tucson Jammer flying around the track. Nice work by Bianca Troll. And in the meantime, Tulegit is going to have a seat in the penalty box for Bellingham, making this a power jam for Tucson. It looks like uh, Tulegit went to the box for, I think, back blocking or a, a major track cut. Right? Well, big time advantage for Tucson. They've already got a big lead, and with the only jammer in the game, Bianca Troll can crack this thing wide open, but not like that. She's stuck on the outside. And Tucson has got to grab somebody in the back of that pack. It looks like they got, they got their girl. And slow her down. Yeah, yeah, they've broken that pack up now. A little bit of room for their jammer. Pixie Axe from Tucson sent to the penalty box, so one of their blockers down. And a wall of red in the front. Bellingham has all four blockers on the floor. Beyond Control, however, the only jammer out there, so she is the only one scoring points. Beyond Control trying to head around and does so. Nice work by number 11. The referee signaling those points and she calls off the jam. Nice work. Referee also signaling a Bellingham skater to the box for blocking outside the engagement zone. You that know, when, no -no. It, when it goes bad, it goes bad all over the place. <laughs> Bellingham unable to score and now in penalty trouble. They're in trubs. But it looks like it's three and three on the floor. It all worked out somehow. Yep. Nice and even. Mina in possession, jamming for Tucson. And 95, Glad I ate her for Bellingham. 58 to 22 on the scoreboard, about five minutes to go here in the first half of this Dust Devil contest. Flat track derby action from right here in Tucson, Arizona. Ooh, Bellingham, it looked like they gave up the line there just for a second. And it looked like the Tucson jammer was going to be able to take it, but she hesitated for just a bit and. Didn't go. Yeah, Mina in possession, struggling a little bit today. Normally one of the higher scorers for Tucson, having a tough time with this Bellingham defense. You know, the Bellingham girls are not a small team. They pack a wallop. And uh, I, I got to say, if it was me out there getting getting used getting, like a pinball. Getting knocked a boot. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be that interested in it either. I would want to want some help from my friends. Yeah, well, she is getting left alone. Hey, we got a lead jammer out front, though, for the Bellingham Blunt Force Trauma. We sure do. That's glad I ate her in position to score for Bellingham. 
That Iator coming up on the back of the pack. Tucson trying to run away from her. Let's see what they can do to get some points on the scoreboard. Tucson doing a great job of running away with that pack. And I hope they don't run too far, so they got to let her go. That was really very interesting. So two points, three, three points for Bellingham, zero for Tucson on that, on that jam. There you have it. And over on track one, we have, I think, Assassination City. In the pink. And the Pikes Peak? No, who is that in black? I can't read the, they all have black shirts. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know, it's Hawaii Pacific. That's who it is. Hawaii Pacific in black and Assassination City in pink. We've They're got Derby all over the place today. Derby all day, every day, from your friends at Derby News Network. Another, They're so good to us. Another time out on the track, it looks like. Yeah. And I don't know if you knew this, Jeff, but at DNN, mm -hmm. we're on a mission to fuel the growth of modern roller derby. Really? Yeah. They're doing it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to find out more. Sure. <laughs> you can go to derbynewsnetwork.com forward slash mission. You can also just donate directly to DNN. Every dollar, every cent goes to helping produce these bowcasts that you see. It helps bring live roller derby into your home while it's happening. And you can comment on it in the text cast. It's a great, great thing. You can cheer on your friends when they're far from home. You can boo the team you hate the most uh, without them hearing you. <laughs> you can heckle the announcers that you, you hate. Can, oh, man. <laughs> yes, heckle the announcers. Please heckle the announcers. I love heckling. Stat Statler and Waldorf, the Muppets, those guys are some of my favorites. Uh. Yeah. They had some, some good, good comebacks. Whoa, while I was flapping my app. Yeah, derby action on the track. Lead jammer goes to Bellingham. Dixie. Both jammers free and clear. Sammy automatic for Tucson on the pack, moving at a high rate of speed as they come down the back stretch. But it is all about Bellingham right now. Dixie coming up on the pack. Let's see how she tries to make her way through. They're kind of split here. Tucson doing a great job of fanning out in that straightaway, making sure that Dixie did not get through all of them. She only picked up two points, a good protect point protect situation for Tucson. Yeah, Helen Wheels kind of rode her to the outside, and she said, you know what, I'm going to call this off Ratch now. Yep. I'm Smart play by Bellingham. Oh, looks like we got another timeout on the track here. Let's see what's happening. I think it's an official timeout. I'm Is not it? sure. The girls seem ready to go, but the officials are, I don't know, they're counting something or, I don't know. Uh, they're writing something down. They're always writing stuff down. I know something else official. I know that Adam Wheels are the official wheel of the WFTDA. They're, they're awesome. You don't say. Atom wheels. Atom wheels. The official wheels yeah. of the W. I have a funny FTDA. story about Atom wheels that actually has nothing to do with Atom wheels. Can you tell it quick? Yep. A friend, a, a teammate of mine, thought that it was pronounced a Tom. Which is cool. <laughs> Which doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Sweet Thunder, I love you, but a Tom? She's like, well, it's atomic, so why would it be Adam? I'm like... Because it's an atom. Right. Atomic comes from <laughs> atom. <laughs> you know, these roller girls atom are here because they skate good, not because they're uh, good at atom. <laughs> or atom, as it were. <laughs> 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 All right, that story was just enough ridiculousness to fill up that official timeout. And I, I hope so. I apologize we don't have a ref announcer liaison for us to tell you what these timeouts are all about. You know, I like it just being a mystery. <laughs> you know, referees are just such a capricious, mysterious bunch. I'm just going to let it go. Them and their stripes. All right, Lindsay Loblo jamming for Tucson, the rookie number five. Okay, so Tucson has started skating, but Bellingham kind of hung out there in the back of the pack. That was an interesting start strategy. Well, it is an individualistic sport. I think it used to be, and I think it is starting to become much less individualistic. Oh, that was an amazing block. 
you know, I see some of the strategies that are taking hold across, you know, uh, roller derby world. And, uh, yeah, I agree with you. I think, you know, what works, everybody starts doing it. Yeah, definitely. And, unfortunately, what works is sometimes not that much fun to watch. I love watching roller derby. I don't care if it's stop, or der stop derby. I don't care stop if, der you know. Roller <laughs> derby. About a month and a half ago in Humboldt County, there was a game of roller derby played without skates. Everyone was wearing socks because the floor was wet and I they had all about, their fans there. Yeah, I heard about sock derby. Yeah. And it, you know, I f when I first heard about it, I was like, that is ridiculous. I can't believe you guys even did that. It's called wrestling. But then I saw the footage and it looked like so much fun. Like to watch these girls run up and, you know, block someone and then get sent out of bounds and have to like run around back and get back into the back. It was kind of the funniest It's like watching thing your little seen. brother and sister fight. It, no, it was <laughs> hilarious. It really was. So I, I, I think I love roller derby in most of its incarnations. It's my favorite sport for sure. All right. Well, we've got roller derby action right here. Number 11 for Tucson, Bianca Troll, trying to make her way through. And I am not sure who that is. That's too legit for Bellingham. He's getting stuck there in the back with Pixie Axe, Tucson. And look out, we got a lead jammer. It is the baby-faced assassin, Bianca Troll for Tucson. Tucson really commanding the speed of this pack, commanding this bout. Yeah, they're this setting the pace. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. It is their game. Yeah, you can't be uh, reacting, you've got to be initiating, and that is where Bellingham is having trouble here. Definitely. But we've got 10 seconds left in this half. And we have an entire second half left for Bellingham to yeah. regroup. Not a blowout by any stretch of the imagination. Bellingham, plenty of weapons. Definitely. And looks like we are at halftime, folks. And with the score at 66 Tucson, 27 Bellingham. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break here, and you guys can, you know, go make a sandwich or heat up a Hot Pocket or something. Uh, maybe Order a pizza. Pour yourself a, a, a cold one, and we'll be back with the second half of this bout in about 15 minutes.
And it looks like we're almost ready to bring you the second half of this game between the Bellingham Roller Buddies Blunt Force Trauma and the hosting Tucson Roller Derby Saddle Tramps. I'm Miss Moxie. And I'm Jeffrey Calmer here on the Derby News Network. We will be uh, have about two minutes. They're still doing a raffle here. The house call. See who's going to take home. I don't even know what the raffle prizes are. I'm I'm horrible. It's a date with you, my friend. You should have been oh, listening. Crap! My boyfriend is going to be mad at me. You can come too. This is 2011, my friend. Hi, Mr. Moxie. You're watching at home with our handsome dog. <laughs> I miss you guys. You want to make that dog an orphan now. Keep that family together. I know. Keep the family together. <laughs> All right. The teams are hunkered down, resting. The referees are gathered around a fire. I think they're cooking their kill, actually, out in the middle of the track. Mm, yum. I can smell it from here. Some kind of roast jackalope, perhaps. Oh, come on now. Indigenous of the Tucson area, huh? Whoa. <laughs> you got a jackalope on your arm, lady. I do have a jackalope tattoo. His name is Merlin. He's my magical, silly pink jackalope. I think Merlin's okay. So I'm not sure if I talked about this already, but this weekend happening right now in Okinawa, Japan, Fast Girl University trainers are hosting a derby clinic. That's so cool. I just can't believe that roller derby is spreading to that extent, that it's in Japan, and that girls from Seattle and Fast Girl University are over there teaching them the basics and the most awesome moves of Carmen Getzem and Wiley Peyote. They're like, they're like missionaries. They are. They're like derby missionaries. Uh -huh. If you want derby missionaries to come to your league. And spread the gospel. Spread the gospel of the Church of Skaten. Check out fastgirlu.com. And we're starting off with Walker Texas Mangler for Bellingham. Yeah, she's jamming against Bianca Troll. Action here in the second half, 66 to 27 on the scoreboard. Tucson in the lead. But it looks like Walker Texas Mangler is going to be your lead jammer. Nice work by Bellingham to get her through both jammers. Free and clear, looking to score. Yep. And actually, once again, Bellingham in the back of that pack. Wow. Looks like three, four whole points, says the jam ref for Walker Texas Mangler. That, that rest was needed I by like Walker Texas Mangler. <laughs> yes, you look good. Like I say, you don't eat an elephant all at once. You do it a bite at a time, and that's what Bellingham's got to do. Stick to the basics and take their points where they can get them. Close the gap on Tucson. I actually don't eat elephants at all. Well, if you did, you wouldn't want to do it a bite at a time. No. <laughs> Sammy Automatic jamming for Tucson, number 22 in black. And two legit in red with that star for the Bellingham Roller Betties. 66 to 31 on the scoreboard as we are early here in the second half coming to you from the Dust Devil in Tucson, Arizona. Sunny, sunny Tucson. Oh, it's damn sunny. <laughs> it's nice. I took a walk at lunch and it, it was nice to feel the sun on my skin. Absolutely. We get I'm, a lot of that here. Yeah, I'm not going to get a tan or anything because, you know, I just burn and peel and then it falls off, but... <laughs> <laughs> don't lose your jackalope, no, my friend. No, I don't, don't burn off the I have to protect. He's already pink. He doesn't need an extra sunburn on top of it. All right. The pack is kind of left, I guess. I don't know what's going on here. It's like a, like a uh, the start of a thoroughbred horse race. Where they're trying to, there we go. Now they got them all lined up. And uh, here come the jammers. Yeah, that was very interesting. A little unusual. It's just, uh, you know, my junk's bigger than your junk. That was, that's what that game is. <laughs> Who, who's going to mess around the most before the whistle gets blown? All right. Looks like Sammy Automatic gets a nice whip from Helen Wheels. She's your lead jammer for Tucson. Ready to come up on the pack already. Meanwhile, the jammer for Bellingham eh, just now clearing the pack. It's all about Sammy Automatic. Makes her first pass through. Nice work by the Saddle Tramps. Nice work. And I wonder if Sammy Automatic is going to attempt to get that point on that jammer or if she's just going to run the clock. She is kind of, yeah. She was poised to tap out, and she tapped out. Nice work by Tucson, getting what they could. Yep, yep, four points. Big lead hit for them, and, and they'll take what they can. Totally. And they're already lined up. A two-jammer rotation. Walker, Texas Mangler with the star one more time for Bellingham. Yeah, Bellingham's going to go with whoever's going to deliver for them. They've got to make up some points, so they cannot take a chance on a unproven jammer. They're going with their big guns. You know, sometimes you just got to do that. Absolutely, and it looks like they can handle it. Meanwhile, Bianca Troll jamming for Tucson, number 11. 
I just have to go ahead and point out a sticker that I'm seeing on the back of a Bellingham skater's helmet. Osaka Punch, number 119, has a Honey Badger Don't Care sticker on the back of her helmet. And it looks like Walker Texas Mangler also don't care. She's lead jammer. <laughs> she said, I don't care. I'm going to take lead jammer. <laughs> Both jammers free and clear. But right now, Walker coming up on the pack. Tucson with a nice line across the back. Ouch. No room at the end. Looks like a street fight. Wow, yeah. That looked crazy. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised no whistles were blown. But mm -hmm. uh, no points also were scored. Zero, zero jam. I'm going to take a slug of my water. Tucson kind of locked arms and said, no room for you. So you Bellingham, may not pass. Yeah. <laughs> Bellingham comes away with nada. Sammy Automatic taking the line for Tucson, number 22 in the black. And she's too legit to quit for Bellingham. 70 to 31 on the scoreboard, just under 40 points separating these teams. About 25 minutes to go. Bellingham trying to rally here in the second half of their second game of the tournament. Using, employing that strategy of starting on their knees, forcing this jam whistle to get called immediately. Uh, I like it. Yeah, it's interesting for I sure. Like uh, I don't know that it's in anyone's favor at this point. Anything that gets them moving quicker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a very short attention span. And as, wow, right out of that pack behind too legit, Sammy Automatic. But your lead jammer is going to be Bellingham. Yeah, we got jammer on jammer action. Ooh. Sammy Automatic says, hello, my name is Sammy. Welcome to Tucson. And Too Legit says, hi, I'm calling it off. <laughs> Let me show you my butt. Yes. <laughs> All right, the team's ready right back on the track. Lindsay Lowblow jamming for Tucson, the youngster who came up through the ranks in their Derby Brat system. She looks good. She looks awesome. I am so excited to see the next generation of roller derby. It brings a little tear to my eye knowing that there are girls out here, out there that are like 10 learning how to play the game. Well, and the neat thing is that this is the only sport that they do. You know what I mean? It's not like in the past where you had people that were maybe basketball or soccer players who transitioned to derby. A lot of these girls have been playing derby since they were old enough to play sports. That's amazing. I hope if I have girls someday that that will be the case for them. All right, well, we've got a jammer out in front for Bellingham. It's Walker, but she's not the lead jammer. In fact, we got no lead jammer. We have a two-minute jam. Take a slug of your beverage of choice per DNN's drinking rules, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we call bonus derby sometimes here in Tucson. Lindsay Loblo coming up on the back of the pack, looking to score. Nobody, oh, we got a jammer coming off the track. Yes, we do. Major back block for Walker, Texas Mangler. Walker's in trouble. Lindsay Loblo is in great shape, though, as the youngster is going to look to catch up with that pack. Let's see what the teams will do to try to strategize. Well, Pixie Axe immediately pulled Osaka Punch from Bellingham to try and goat her in the back of the pack, but unfortunately the rest of her team didn't quite catch on and they let her go. Pixie Axe, one of the top players here in the Saddle Tramps organization. Too bad they didn't look after her. Yeah, Lindsay Loblo having a tough time at the back of the pack, bouncing off of people. They're really just kind of letting Bellingham have their way with their jammer. Oh, there we go. An amazing <laughs> hit to the inside. I don't know who that pivot is for Tucson, but she made that happen all by herself. Yes. She took out the entire pack. <laughs> Skaters flying like bowling pins. That's Cosmo Naughty for Tucson. Nice hit. And one more grand slam for 18-year-old Lindsay Lowblow and her Tucson Saddle Tramps. Yeah, the youngster definitely getting it done. Now the pack kind of stalled out in the front track. Let's see here. Well, Lindsay says, I'm taking this inside route. Pack very spread out, and Lindsay, there's the whistles. Yep, four more points for Tucson, 14-point jam for Tucson. Uh, and I think Walker actually ended up scoring five coming out of the box. That brings our score to 89 points, Tucson Saddle Tramps, 36 points, Bellingham Blunt Force Trauma. About 22 minutes to go here in the Dust Devil, Tucson taking on Bellingham. You know, I just kind of thought about something. Uh, Bellingham's name, Blunt Force Trauma, I wonder if that has anything to do with the CSI episode, um, right. the Derby CSI episode where that girl died via Blunt Force trauma. It may well. Of a elbow pad to a lot the back. Of, a lot of roller girls like TV. 
Yep. All right, what's going on here on the track? Well, we got a skater getting whistled off. We got all kinds of action as we got a fast moving pack coming down the middle and Sammy Automatic Tucson's jammer jumps out in front. She's your lead jammer. She is your lead jammer. Jammer. The pack's still flying. Both jammers free and clear now, looking to score points as it looks like too legit got around Helen Wheels. She did get around Helen Wheels, but it looks like she didn't get around somebody legally because she is going to sit for a moment in the box, oh, making it a power jam for Tucson and Sammy Automatic. All these rules. All these rules, all these things, all these whistles. One I more Bellingham I got, skater. I got into roller derby to get away from the man, all right? Mm, Dang. No. See all those men out yeah. there in the middle? Oh, oh, yeah, in the pink shirts. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I see them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see them. They're keeping me down, man. <laughs> they Don't let the man get you down, they man. Get, they got Shamu locked. In a, in a chlorine tank. <laughs> <sighs> Meanwhile, Sammy Automatic is going to make the best out of the situation as she comes down the inside and calls out the jam. Tucson in the driver's seat, 99 to 36. 20 minutes to go here in the bout. Where are we? The Tucson Convention Center? We are at the Tucson Convention Center right here at beautiful. Tucson, Arizona. It's a great venue. I have to say, I kind of want to go hang out outside and sit on one of those little stools and dangle my feet into one of the fountains. There's so much water going on out there. They, well, if you lived in Tucson, you'd have fountains too, man. <laughs> That's the only place there's water. Fair enough. <laughs> Beyond Power. Control jamming for Tucson. The baby-faced assassin jamming solo. Looks like Too Legit is in the penalty box. I hope she's thinking about what she's done. Well... Tucson is thinking about which of the Bellingham girls they're going to have sit down so that their girl can get lead jammer. Looks like they're picking on Chaos Fury. And we do have lead jammer, Sammy Automatic. Or that's not Sammy Automatic. Yeah, Beyond, Beyond Control. Control. Number 11 gets lead jammer status. And oh, looks like Sunny Side Up is getting whistled off the track for Tucson. I like her name. It's a good name. Yeah, I also like eggs. Eggs are good. <laughs> Eggs are good. And Grand Slam, Tucson. Yeah, 104 to 36 on the scoreboard now. Tucson opening up a big, big can here at the Dust Devil. And too legit back on the track. I think Beyond Control sees her and is going to try and score a couple points before she calls off the jam. Maybe she doesn't see her because she's letting her score. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be... Four points for Bellingham, two points for Beyond Control that's and you, Tucson. That's what we call a Band-Aid. Put a little Band-Aid on that cut, you know? Well, it's all about point differentials. So if I get two points and you get four points, I didn't do my job. <laughs> Something went wrong. All right, Lindsay Loblow, the rookie, taking the line for Tucson, number five in black. And there's a ref in the way, but due to the jammer start, it looks like I'm going to have to say, oh, no, it's Dixie jamming for Bellingham. Dixie Death Dealer. I love that name. All right, the pack not moving all that fast now. Looks like they've got some strategy going on. Whoa, lead jammer status. Lindsay Loblow, quicker than a hiccup, makes her way through the pack. Yes. She is out, out right before turn three. That's pretty quick. She's wily, that one. She's tricky. These kids today, they got yeah. their cell phones and their iPods <laughs> and their MySpace and, you know. And they really have the endurance. I mean, she does not look tired at all. Yeah, no, there's a big difference between 18 and 28, my friend. Or 38. Oh, my God. Or yeah. 48, if you're me. Let's talk about 38. Let's talk about that. And wow. Lindsay Loblo continues to fly around the track and calls off the gym. Nice job by the rookie for Tucson's own saddle tramps. Yep, not too sure why she called it, but she called it and she scored four points in the it's, process. So. It's the impetuousness of youth. <laughs> she thought it was the right thing to do. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta go with your gut. That's it. All right, Bianca Troll taking the line for Tucson number 11 in black. And I don't even have to say who that is. Lining up for Bellingham, but I will because I'm nice. Walker, Texas Mangler. Yeah, she's been doing a great job for the ladies in red all day long. One of their go-to gals on the jammer line. There goes the pack, and here come the jammers. Number 11 and number 45. It's 110 to 40 on the scoreboard. Tucson in control. Woo! Bellingham trying to rally. Ouch! <laughs> 
And it looks like Tucson ran into each other there while they were trying to block Walker, Texas Mangler. It's like a Three Stooges movie out it there. It was kind of funny, but, you know, both jammers. Ooh, ooh. Why you, I oughta. Why I, I, yeah. Uh-oh. Bad news. Bianca Troll sent to the penalty box. Another Tucson skater now, Duchess. Dirty Duchess going to the box. Tucson in trouble. The wheel's coming off a little bit for the Saddle Tramps. They should probably pull it together here. I mean, they do have a commanding lead. 16 minutes left in the bout. Oh. And now Everybody with Walker getting box. whistled off, we got both jammers in the penalty box. <laughs> it's like the old question. If a tree falls in the forest and there are no jammers, do we keep playing? I think we do. There are boos happening from the Bellingham section. I happen to know that their stomachs, those, those guys with the stuff on their stomachs, it says the name of one of their skaters. I thought they were just booing the guys with no shirts. The, the guys in the sh no shirts were booing the guys no, with no shirts? No, I thought shirts? the crowd was booing the guys with no shirts. Oh, no, that was the guys with no shirts uh, who were booing. They're pretty loud for guys with no shirts. <laughs> <laughs> they're brave. I like those guys. And Walker, Texas Mangler out, not lead jammer, but she is out of the pack. I don't think she wants to call it off anyway. She's going to make up about 70 points. She does, it's true. 15 minutes to go here. Bellingham in good shape with the only jammer on the track and Walker makes her way through once more. Nice work. Yes, that looked very, very clean. Another Tucson skater coming off the track to the penalty box. Pinky McLovin whistled off. I'll tell you what, we don't have much time, but I think we're going to have ourselves a good roller derby bout the rest of the way. Yes. Tucson uh, not keeping control. If they can stay out of the box, they will definitely win this game. Like I said, uh, I'm bad at math, and those numbers, 119 Tucson, 52 Bellingham, so. It's like 60-ish. 70-ish. 70-ish? 70-ish. Almost Our 70. Lindsay Lowblow on the line for Tucson. And Dixie for Bellingham. We have a poodle or a cougar, whichever animal you prefer from the animal kingdom. That means there's going to be two blockers on the track for Tucson and three for Bellingham. Bellingham coming on strong here late in the bout. I'd love to see these ladies make a run at it. Oh, Pixie Axe tries real hard to take that uh, Bellingham jammer out of bounds, but goes out of bounds herself. It happens sometimes. Meanwhile, Lindsay Loblo gets lead jammer status, but both jammers are free and clear and tooling around this track. Lindsay tries the inside route. Nice play by the youngster. Calls it off one way or the other. Good work. Three points for Tucson. I don't see a ref hand for Bellingham, but I'm guessing it was zero. So that girl out there in the greenish yellow hat for Bellingham, her name yes. is Cut a Bitch. Okay. And it is her name that those fine gentlemen with their shirts off have written on their chests. I mean, you want to know what that means? Uh, but I can guess. It just says Cutta. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? K-U-T-T-A. K-U-T-T-A. That's what it says. <laughs> I like when fans go wild. It's cool. You know what? I hope they're having a great time. They look a little bummed out now, but... <laughs> All right, lead jammer status heads out to Tucson. Sammy Automatic makes her way through, gets lead jammer status, number 22 in black. Tucson with just, still just, well, now they have their full pack, but at the beginning of that jam, they only had two girls on the track. Sammy Automatic trying to make her way around the outside. Now goes inside. She gets a free pass. The pack is pretty spread out. So it looks like we had a track cut for Too Legit. She's going to go sit down for a minute. Not um, the thing you want to do when you're the Bellingham jammer. No, both teams having trouble with penalties. I see Sunnyside up is back in the penalty box. And Tucson, you know, that's not going to work for them. If they manage <laughs> to get past Bellingham, you know, tomorrow and further on down the tournament, you've got to keep that stuff wired tight, my friend. Well, the winner of this game is going to go on to play Silicon Valley Roller Girls. Ow. Who are 2-0 and oh so far in the they season, They are 2-0. Oh. Yeah. Big 2-0 and oh for uh, the girls from San Jose. Yeah, the ladies in green have looked mighty, mighty tough. Yep, they're looking good. Bianca Troll jamming for Tucson. 12 minutes to go, and it's 128-52 to 52 on the scoreboard from the Dust Devil here in Tucson. If I were Tucson and I were those two blockers on the track, I would play so clean 
I would play really clean. The refs would be so proud of me. Like you're barely there? Yeah, because, you know, the last thing you want is for that to happen. <laughs> you have two skaters on the track, and one of them's going to the box. And Pixie acts. And she, <laughs> and she can't even go to the penalty box. There's no room. There's no room in the inn for Pixie Axe. She has to get back on the track. <laughs> it's like when you're at the airport. She's going to circle. <laughs> she is going to circle. <laughs> you just circle until we call you in. Yes, because this is a no parking zone. Oh, my gosh. All right. Bianca Troll is your lead jammer. She will be maybe picking up some points but again Tucson with a very small rotating pack that cannot stay out of this box yeah bad and news for Tucson they've got to get a little more control I mean they're up by you know a bunch of points and they're taking these silly penalties they've got to clean up that game if they want to move on in this tournament yes they do because when you get into the final rounds tomorrow those penalties will kill you yeah and you know I have to say Silicon Valley looked very very clean in their bout against uh, who the crap did they just play well both their bouts yeah they're very disciplined a really really you know tight tight game plan oh yeah Pikes Peak mm -hmm. the Silicon Valley looked very very clean so you know if Tucson uh, can't stay out of the box they're gonna have a lot of trouble with Silicon Valley right you might win this game but you're gonna have problems in the next one hopefully it's something they can clear up we'll see they've got about 10 minutes to go in this bout 132 to 52 and even you can do that math uh, yeah, it is uh, 80, an 80 point game uh, with 10 minutes left. So uh, Walker Texas Mangler is living on a wing and a prayer right now, jamming for the Bellingham Roller Betties. Yeah, she's going up against Lindsay Loblo, the rookie from Tucson. And uh, right now, Bellingham's got to let it all hang out because there is no tomorrow in the single elimination format. You know, Walker Texas Mangler has a lot of Bonnie Thunders moves. She has those toe stop runs. She's very, very jukey in the pack. She hits with her shoulders and just makes her own way through. Yeah. No help from her girls. That was incredible. She yeah. worked really hard for that lead jammer call. Absolutely nice work out there by Walker. Just powers her way through the pack on sheer will and intestinal <laughs> fortitude. <laughs> I'm going to have some of that later. I'm going to eat a chili dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a hot dog with some intestinal fortitude on it. <laughs> All right. And the jam is called three, three points for Bellingham. It's the time of day where I can not make out ref fingers so clearly anymore. <laughs> Maybe I should drink some water. Have some agua, my friend. Stay hydrated. That's my advice here in Tucson. Definitely staying hydrated. All right. Bianca Troll on the line for Tucson. And hold on. The referees are the referees are calling a timeout, it sounds like. They got to. They have things to talk about. Well. I want to talk about antic skates. Tell us. Brought to you by Mo Quadzilla Sanders, the same guy who brought us Heartless Wheels and Gumball Toe Stops, just about everybody's favorite toe stops. They're my favorite. Yeah, he makes the freshest skates in <laughs> roller derby today. Antic. If you haven't seen him or tried him on, check out Antic Skates. They're also available at Fast Girl Skates, and if you go to Fast Girl and buy a pair of Antics, they will heat mold them to your feet for free. It sounds painful, but I'm sure it's good. It's not like surgery. It's a little warm, but it won't hurt you. All right, back on the track. We've got roller derby action. Bianca Troll, the jammer for Tucson, makes her way to the front of the pack. That thing is not updating. And our scoreboard, for some reason, doesn't want to update anymore either. I'm pretty sure Tucson's winning, but I'm not positive. They're definitely winning. They are also definitely sending the Bellingham jammer to the floor repeatedly. <laughs> They're dribbling her. Oh, and now Bianca Troll is on the floor. People on the floor, left and right, pile up in turn two. Yeah, we got trouble here as they come down into the front stretch. Bianca Troll, who I believe is your lead jammer, having a tough time making her way through. Something, something hurts. Yeah, she looks like she's having some difficulty there at the back of the pack. And she calls it off. I hope she's all right. She looks like she may be hurt. I mean, not super hurt, but. Yeah, might might just be. Like uh, an owie? Might just be an owie. She might just need a minute. Might need some ice. Put some dirt on it or something. Yeah. All right. Um, I would imagine that some of these girls are going to go back to their hotel rooms tonight and do really a really unfun thing, and that is take an ice bath. Ow. It's, it sucks. 
Got to get that lactic acid out of your system yeah, or what? Ow. Yeah, you know, and it really does, it really does help uh, take away the ouchies, take the swelling down, and allow you to skate two, two games tomorrow after two hard-hitting games today. What we do to our bodies for the love of roller derby. I'm going to go home and bathe some Jack Daniels in ice is what I'm going to do. <laughs> it's a different ice bath, but. You know, it's kind of unheard of for me, Miss Moxie, to not have had a beverage yet today. It's 4.30 and I'm at a roller derby tur tournament, but I am confident that Mr. Block and Mr. Moxie are back at the House of Hot Beans having beers for me. So raise a glass, gentlemen. Have one for me. I hope so. How come you're on the wagon? What's the matter? I'm not on the wagon. I just haven't had time to get a beer. Well, then you're on the wagon. <laughs> if you're not drinking, it's you're on the wagon. It's totally unintentional. I promise you. <laughs> I'll make up for it later. I have a break later. All right. Lindsay Loblow jamming for Tucson, the rookie sensation. She has put a lot of points on the board today for Tucson. Lindsay Loblow has got to be. Uh, do you think at 18 she's still in high school? Uh, tough. To, I think she got kicked out. Oh, okay. Well, maybe she is the star of her star of her block, maybe. And there she goes. She's out, but she is not your lead jammer. Dixie still fighting for that title. Hard hits from the Tucson girls, and she is going to oh cut the track. And yeah. Dixie gets sent to the penalty box. Track cutting seems to be the call. It does. Lindsay Lobo, the only jammer left on the track, and 130-something uh, to something-something on the scoreboard. <laughs> Lindsay Lobo taking the inside route. Ouch! That blocker went down. <laughs> she wanted to get by Chaos Fury, and she sent her... Sounds like back instead. blocking. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think it was a back block. If call. I was, I, I think if I was a roller derby girl, I would get back blocking all the time because I'd be skating so fast. I'd be like, I don't want to stop. You know, you have to know how to stop. There's a lot of ways to stop. You can toe stop. You can plow stop. You can hockey stop. How about if I just run into you? Is that stopping? It is stopping, but it's not stopping in the right way. It's wrong. All right. Yeah, it's just wrong. Leave it to me. And it's dangerous, which is actually why it's a penalty. Oh, all right. Most well, not dangerous for me. Most dangerous for the guy I'm running into. Right. Most penalties that make sense are uh, penalties that are actually helping to keep people on the track from injuring each all other. All right. All right. Enough about the rules. You're depressing me. 141 <laughs> to 55, just under six minutes to go here in this bout. Tucson and Bellingham. And Dixie putting on up five points on the board for the Bellingham Roller Betties. The Death Dealer getting it done for Bellingham. Whoa, big hit from a Bellingham girl. Pile up turn one, and that's the jam. All right, time running out here in the bout. Just about five and a half minutes to go. Tucson with a commanding lead. Bellingham trying to rally. They'll send Walker to the line to jam Sammy Automatic for Tucson. That is what I would do. The score, 145 Tucson, 63 Bellingham. I believe Tucson has got the W in their back pockets. Let's see if they can hang on to it in these last five minutes. Yeah, the game is theirs to lose. Let's see if they can keep it together and hold the line. Oh, like the Toto song. Love isn't always on time. No, no, no. <laughs> Hold the line. <laughs> Man, see, now would be a good time for me to also have a DJ thingy here. We could play that song. It's a great, great song, man. You're dropping Toto bombs. I'm right there with you, sister. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you. And Sammy Automatic right there with the lead jammer call. Yeah, Tucson gets number 22 through like they've done all day long. Walker trailing, ready to score, but right now Sammy's trying to make her way through on the inside. Yeah, calls it off with a little help from S Helen Wheels. Helen Wheels. Listen, it's been a long day. And we have a timeout for the Bellingham bench. They need a little bit break. See what they can do here. We have a little chit chat. Out. Yeah, they're going to talk about some stuff. Let's figure this out, people. I want to talk about Hotel Arizona. Tell us. Well, they have very nice, clean rooms, mm -hmm. and their windows open, which is a big plus in a hotel for me, because although it is toasty here in Arizona, I can't sleep with the windows shut. 
I need fresh air. Okay. So I, I like when hotel room windows open. I don't like feeling like I'm locked in the hotel. Like when in they, Vegas, when, they, when it's oh all yeah. sealed up like, a, like an awful. aquarium. And you, you wake <laughs> up in the morning and your nose is like crusty, crusty bugs because you've been breathing that recycled uh, I don't know what you've been all doing all night long. <laughs> no, I'm serious. That's what air conditioning does to me. It's awful. It's awful stuff. So Hotel Arizona, beautiful fresh air through those wonderful windows. Yes. And they also have a great, great complimentary continental breakfast with fabulous potatoes. Ah. And the coffee's not bad either. They actually serve Starbucks. Well, there you go. Hotel Arizona. Thank you for taking care of us, Hotel Arizona. I recommend anyone and everyone coming to Dust Devil next year stay at Hotel Arizona. Check them out at hotelarizona.com. Our good friends. All right, Lindsay Loblo on the line for Tucson. And Walker, Texas Mangler. They took a timeout so she could go in again. Yeah, I'd keep sending her out there. I would too. <laughs> she is incredible. I'd keep calling timeouts I didn't even have. <laughs> All right, here they come. The pack almost at a standstill in turn one, and they are just trying to form some kind of a line. Not working out though. Walker makes it through. Lead jammer for Bellingham. She's doing her thing. Yeah, nice work getting it done. Lindsay Loblo getting rowed down in turn one. And yeah, Astroglide I think is going to go to the box for that. Astroglide took her down. I'm not sure if it was illegal or not. No, I guess they're not going to call it. I think it, it kind of oh. looked like... And Lindsay got sent back to the box. Yeah, it looked like Lindsay actually fell and took uh, the Bellingham blocker with her. Yeah. And I don't think it was intentional, but you know the refs, they can't call intent. Hey, I don't know what the refs are doing half the time. <laughs> well, whatever it is, we're thankful for it because they help us keep these games going. So we've got one jammer out there. It's Walker. And great news for her team as they're trailing with three minutes to go here in this Dust Devil bout. And they are doing a great job of keeping that pack slow and allowing her to get out of the pack. Oh, no, not clean though. Oh, she's trying to plead her case with paparazzi, the referee, but he's not having any of it. If there's, <laughs> if there's anything I've learned from skating roller derby for seven years, it's that you can argue with the refs till you're blue in the face, but guess what? It's not gonna get you anywhere. Yeah, I'm married to a referee, I can tell you. <laughs> it's totally true, totally, totally true. Nice. All right, Lindsay Loblow out of the penalty box and looking to add insult to injury. Nice work, takes the outside line. Lindsay Loblow. Incredible juke there on Astro Glide. These youngsters today, their bones, they're so limber and her skull's not fully grown together yet. <laughs> I'm just That's kidding. That's why helmet. Yeah, yeah, good thing she got a helmet on. Uh -huh. Her fontanelle's all messed up. Yeah. Two minutes to go here in this Dust Devil matchup. Tucson and Bellingham. Tucson with a big lead. Big lead. 151 Tucson, 63 Bellingham. Two minutes on the period clock. And Dump Truck is shaking his derby skin's butt back there. I don't know what's going on. I, I can tell you what's going on, but I don't want to say it out loud. Hi. The team's lining up. The clock not running. So at least my clock's not running. Do we have a timeout on the track? Um, we do have a timeout on the track. Well, that's good. That'll give us a chance to talk about some of our fantastic sponsors, no? It will. I can talk about things like Adam Wheels. A Tom. A Tom Wheels. Yes. <laughs> a Tom makes a trick. A Tom. Yes. Um, I've heard that they are a very pleasant company to deal with if you are a derby uh, purveyor of, of goods. If you have a store uh, or a business that wants to carry derby goods, I've heard that Atomatrix is really great at customer service, very friendly, very helpful. All the things that you would want in uh, the owner of a great you know, wheel company. In, so. in any business partner. Yeah. Sure. I, I, I haven't dealt with her myself, but... I have a friend, her name's Motley Cruz. She owns Cruz Skate Shop, and she has dealt with Atomatrix and really likes her. Says nothing but good things about her. There you have it, Atom <laughs> Matrix. <laughs> Atomwheels.com. <laughs> Who's the skater who said that? Uh, that's Sweet Thunder. I love Sweet Thunder so Dead. much. Yeah, she's great. <laughs> Atom. Atom. Because <laughs> it's like atomic. It is, it is like atomic. <laughs> sweet, sweet thunder. Oh, yes. All right, folks, we're just under two minutes here. 151 to 67 on the scoreboard. Tucson in front, and Tucson looks like they'll have the only jammer on the track with Sammy Automatic out there lonely, lonely, lonely on the jammer line. But 
Walker looks like she's up on her wheels and ready to jump back in any second. Yeah, 10 seconds or less in the box. She is standing. So let's see, let's see where this takes us. The referees are still sorting something out. There's They're some guy in a pink t-shirt something. standing in front of the pack so they can't go. Ow. I think that is quad damage, one of the most famous Tucson referees. I have some trivia for you, Jeff. Hit me. You know why the NSOs wear pink? No. It's the color of the WFTDA. I did not know that. <laughs> See? Very nice. I think it's funny. I think it's funny that they wear pink. It's like, hey, dudes, do you want to help us out? Here, wear this pink shirt. Well, <laughs> normally Tucson at their home bouts that are not like WFTDA tournament style, they uh -huh. have like these sort of orange uh, scrubs. Like oh. Medical student things. That yeah. works, too. Yeah. As long as they're, uh, you know, you can notice them. Their uniform. Oh, oh, trust me. You can yes. notice them. <laughs> but for these big time <laughs> tournaments, yeah, pink is the color of the WFTDA. All right, looks like we're ready to close this thing out here. We got about enough time for one more jam, maybe two, depending on how things go. Bellingham, really smart, not starting this pack. They want to get their jammer out of the box. And there she goes, Walker Texas Mangler back on the track. And now you may, you may go. Tucson still not wanting to give up that back wall. Oh my wow. gosh, Walker. <laughs> Incredible jamming. This girl, I love watching her skate. I am a big fan. I'm yeah. so excited that I got to see Bellingham skate for the first time for myself this weekend. And I'm a huge fan of Walker Texas Mingler. Yeah, Walker takes the inside line and just makes the uh, Tucson skaters look like they're standing still, which they kind of <laughs> were. They were. They were. <laughs> Actually, not kind of, they were. They were standing still, it's true. <laughs> Maybe wiggling a little bit. Yeah, twitching. So Walker looking to make her way through the pack. Sammy Automatic also out there jamming. She less looks at her jam ref and says, am I lead? Uh, if I am, I want to call it off. So less, two and two. Less than a minute to go here, folks. 50 seconds. It's a buck 53 to 69 on the scoreboard. Tucson and Bellingham here from the Dust Devil in Tucson, Arizona. Tucson looks great. Good start. I, I want to see more discipline out of them. Yeah, I mean, you know, they have been in the box. They've had some penalty trouble, a yeah. little bit sloppy. But mm -hmm. if they can get that together, I mean, this is a different team than I saw, I don't know, a couple of years ago. They mm -hmm. really they really have it together. Yeah, Tucson looking sharp today. Let's mm -hmm. see if they can keep it going, provided they can get past Bellingham. With 19 seconds to go, I think it's a good bet. Yep, I do too. If I had to wager, I know where my money would be. But I ain't much of a wagerer. You're not even drinking today. What fun are you? <laughs> you won't bet. You won't drink. Keep Why talking about your dog here? at home. I love <laughs> my dog. You would too. He's so handsome. <laughs> I have actual children. I can't have dogs. You and Lindsay Loblo, both? the lead jammer. Yeah, but if you have kids, you don't talk about your dog like that. Oh, fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. All right. The, g uh, the, the game clock has run out. We're on the jam clock now. And Lindsay Loblo, she just does not want to call off the jam. She's, she's, like, a, good, she's uh, a kid. Yeah, I'm yeah. having a good time. And now Let she Let me does. score my five, <laughs> four more points, and now I will call off the jam. All right, folks. We're waiting for the final score, but I can tell you this much. Tucson defeats Bellingham Roller Betties right here at the Dust Devil. Yes, and that means that they will go on to play the Silicon Valley Roller Girls tomorrow at 11 a.m. on track two, this very track. So make sure to join us then. Uh, we are going to go ahead and sign out. I have been and will continue to be Miss Moxie. And Jeffrey Calmer. We'll see you guys later.